Hello, I am Judith Hudson, your District 7 Coast Guard Auxiliary Commodore, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another video message. Today, I would like to focus on surface and air operations. These major mission areas are related to two of our district goals, to recruit, mentor, and train new members, and to provide the gold standard of logistical, operational, and administrative support to Coast Guard units. You all know that the level of training for auxiliary coxswain, boat crew, observer, air crew, and pilots has been raised to a higher standard. While this increased level of training has caused some challenges to ensure we turn proper tasking into smooth performing habits, we know that the reason for these higher standards is safety, our number one priority, and to ensure that we are always prepared for the unexpected. Currently, surface operations in flotillas and divisions are consolidating resources to work as a team to meet scheduled patrols and Coast Guard requests, which means that our members are gaining new and varied experiences serving on missions with different members and on different facilities. That's a very positive result. The use of active duty qualification examiners has brought increased education and awareness of how the Coast Guard performs voting tasks, as well as bringing more standardization to the qualification examination process. That's another very positive result. However, in the last 10 years, surface operations has declined in terms of the number of certified members, facilities, missions, and hours very significantly. In most of those categories, we are down approximately 50% from a decade ago. So far, we are meeting almost all of the calls from the Coast Guard, but we won't be able to do that if our numbers fall any further. Unfortunately, in service operations, many members feel that they are not being used by the Coast Guard to the level of training that is being required. As a result, I am asking auxiliary sector coordinators and auxiliary unit coordinators as the points of contact between the auxiliary and the active duty to consult with division and flotilla operations officers and then to meet with Coast Guard station officers to discuss how we can support and assist their operations and to learn what we can do to promote the stations to think auxiliary, recognizing the benefits of having our our people integrated with them on the water are very significant. Our air operations show similar declines in certified members, facilities, missions, and hours. With ongoing recruiting efforts, we are attracting a few new members and facilities to the air program. The flight hours for the first quarter this year were up almost 8% from a year ago, a very good sign. It is important to keep these new members involved with learning, attending events, participating in planning, and learning the auxiliary way of documenting and reporting. Exposure to missions outside of the AIR program while waiting to be vetted can be very helpful also to increase their overall knowledge and potential co uh, contributions to the auxiliary. Joint air and surface operations to train, communicate, and learn more about another side of operations is good for all involved. Bill Beckett, our district staff officer of operations, has planned such an event. We need to make joint missions more common. On another note, let's use National Safe Boating Week to be innovative and creative in conveying our safety messages. Where possible, set up a static display of an auxiliary vessel in addition to a recruiting booth. Another suggestion is to have a banner made with a new slogan such as, Volunteers are priceless. You can be priceless. Use your messages, displays, and methods for our public outreach in new ways. The poster that Angela Palmero and Greg DeToma just designed saying, dressed in orange, they train to keep you safe, the auxiliary is the new orange, is a great example of how we can communicate our message in a new way. Thank you for all your contributions in our missions. Until next time, Semper Paratus.